Hello, welcome to CivilNet. I am Mashak Khazaryan. Over the last month, you have seen the Velvet Revolution take place here in Armenia. You saw one Prime Minister, Serge Sarkisyan, resign, and another one, after tense negotiations, was confirmed in Nikol Pashinyan. Today we are joined by Ambassador of the European Union to Armenia, Ambassador Piotr Svitalski, who is here to discuss Armenia and European Union relations with us. Ambassador, welcome and thank you very much for joining us. It's a big pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. Certainly. We wanted to start off by asking, how is the Velvet Revolution seen by the European Union and what does the European Union see in that within Ar Armenia that might be positive moving forward? Let's start off by thanking you, thanking CivilNet for the wonderful job that you performed during these uh, very important days in Armenia. Uh, thanks to you, uh, people like me, diplomats stationed in Yerevan, expats working here in Armenia, but also I think uh, people across the globe could follow the developments uh, by the hour, live stream, and could uh, understand uh, the developments. Uh, I'm very grateful to you, like uh, my colleagues who do not uh, speak Armenian, so they relied totally on you, and CivilNet became the favorite media outlet, at least in my family. <laughs> so thank you. No, thank you very much. We're glad to be able to help that service. Uh, look, throughout the crisis, the European Union has had a, a very simple message. Uh, we called upon to uh, act with restraint and act through dialogue. Restraint and dialogue were the key messages that the European Union uh, was passing to Armenia throughout the crisis. Uh, uh, some analysts, local analysts, Armenian analysts, but also uh, experts abroad, uh, considered the political crisis in Armenia to be the most acute since uh, the independence. Uh, but uh, uh, what we have now uh, is a big, a big success story for Armenia that this crisis has been diffused within the constitutional framework, applying all the constitutional requirements and uh, provisions uh, through dialogue uh, and uh, in a successful manner. Uh, we have no casualties, we have, no, we have had no confrontation, uh, and uh, Armenians can now say that they uh, created a new political quality uh, acting together, showing solidarity as a nation, and they, they indeed can be proud of themselves. Armenians can be proud of themselves because they uh, show to the whole world how to solve difficult political conflicts, difficult political questions, acting on the basis of national solidarity. And uh, let's be frank, the settlement of this conflict was possible thanks to the contribution of all stakeholders. All have an important role in diffusing the crisis and all should be uh, paid tribute to. Uh, so uh, the European Union is of course very happy that the crisis has been diffused, that Armenians uh, applied the necessary uh, constitutional and legal provisions showing that the foundation of foundations of the state, the legal foundations of the state. The rule of law is very strong in the mentality of Armenians, is very strong in terms of uh, uh, performing political functions by the state. Well done, Armenians. No, certainly, uh, the, the, democratiz the, the democratization process has been interesting to watch and certainly will be interesting to watch moving forward. Um, in that vein, how do you think Armenia's and the European Union's relationship uh, will move forward, uh, looking ahead? Uh, we have a very good basis. We have the Comprehensive and Enhanced Partnership Agreement, which was unanimously uh, approved by the National Assembly of Armenia. And I think that this agreement is a very strong asset. Uh, we have now uh, the task to implement the agreement. Uh, we believe that uh, the process of implementation will proceed speedily, uh, quite soon, uh, mid-May, on the 16th of May, there will be a special meeting of the Foreign Affairs Committee of the European Parliament. Uh, this meeting uh, will uh, result in the consent of the European Parliament. And then uh, from the 1st of June, we are hoping that the agreement will enter into force. Uh, so, uh, uh, 
I believe uh, this process of implementation uh, will bring the expected results. As I said, the agreement is the floor, not the ceiling. It contains a lot of possibilities. And I believe uh, that Armenia, the new government, all stakeholders uh, can look to the agreement, exploring all the potential it contains and uh, implement it. So we go forward with our plans, uh, with our intentions, with our schedule of uh, meetings and contacts. Let me also announce that uh, next week we will have an important human rights dialogue, uh, which I believe also can uh, help us to understand better the situation and the plans of, of the new government. So uh, in the pipeline we have very important projects uh, in the field of um, development assistance, modernization of Armenia. Of course, uh, we will be discussing with the new prime minister, the new government, uh, uh, their expectations. Uh, but uh, based on what we have heard so far, there will be a lot of continuity. And I believe the continuity factor is very important. Uh, I want to pay credit to all our partners from the previous government because they have been very reliable partners in uh, negotiating the SEPA agreement, in preparing all the conditions for our uh, relations to develop further. So on this basis, let's move forward, forward with pragmatism, with goodwill, and exploring all the potential contained in SEPA. You just addressed, I think, something very interesting in how the government of Armenia should move forward or is moving forward in vis-a-vis uh, -vis its relations with the European Union and some of the, the agreements and pacts you've already established and are looking at moving ahead. If you were to look at this from, the pers uh, from your perspective, how would you address the people uh, here in Armenia and how they should look at what's going to move forward and sort of the timeline and process uh, of that movement? I think that uh, uh, the most amazing element in the recent developments uh, were the people of Armenia and the amount of positive energy they were able to generate. Yes, every observer, every person who foreigner, a diplomat or an expat who was here during the events was impressed by this positive energy, the participation of women, the participation of the young generation. I think that's very important. And as I said, many other nations would envy this amount of positive energy. Of course, the big question is uh, how you harness this energy, how you tap this energy into a constructive process. Uh, that's the big task uh, in front of the government, but also in front of the other elements of the civil society. Uh, this is the beginning of the road. What happened is not the end of the story. <laughs> I would even say the hardest part starts now. And, and uh, the hardest of, of, of all is how to uh, make this uh, uh, people, young people, who generated so much energy, uh, feeling fulfilled. Uh, and I think that every political force in Armenia will be thinking about this positive energy, the young generation, the hopes, the expectations. Uh, this is the most important part. Uh, we cannot, uh, of course, uh, as the European Union, interfere in something what is very domestic very Armenian, uh, but I, I believe that we will be there as uh, international partners. Uh, if there are initiatives in this direction, we will be always ready to think in constructive terms and to assist Armenia. If I could for a moment now to take a step away from your European Union uh, representation hat and go into something a little bit more personal, as a poll, um, the solidarity movement that took place in Poland. Uh, do you see a similarity there? Do you see any potential pitfalls from that movement to what the Armenian Velvet Revolution uh, is looking forward or looking ahead to? Well, I, I think that uh, there are similarities, but there are obvious differences. The historical con context is uh, totally different. Uh, the uh, background of the developments is, is different. 
Uh, there are, of course, uh, some similarities, uh, in particular concerning uh, uh, the, the mass character of uh, the protests and, and some of the details. I don't want to go into uh, too many of these details, uh, but uh, when I heard uh, Mr. Pashinyan insisting on having negotiations uh, in public with the presence of the media, I immediately uh, remembered Lech Valensa, uh, who in 1980 insisted on the same. Uh, all the negotiations between the uh, Solidarity team and the government were conducted in public. Uh, why? Maybe the reasons were different, but even some of the words used uh, were bringing back the old memories, uh, very old memories. Uh, but uh, I believe, and I'm not uh, now in a position to compare, uh, and probably we need time and distance, uh, but definitely the Armenian developments were unique. Uh, in, in many ways, uh, they cannot be compared to anything that happened, uh, which on the surface may look similar, uh, like, I don't know, the Velvet uh, uh, Revolution in Prague or uh, the tumbling of the Berlin Wall. By the way, I was there. <laughs> I have a luck. <laughs> You've seen some very interesting moments in history. Yes, I, I witnessed some of the events uh, by, by simple coincidence. Uh, and, uh, so, uh, but uh, let's agree uh, that the Armenian experience is very unique uh, and has very unique characteristic features and, and something that I, I believe uh, will be part of your history and your identity. Uh, so. Parallels are important, but uh, let's agree that Armenia is different. Certainly, no. And uh, Ambassador, um, thank you very much uh, for joining us here today. Uh, I think this has been very illuminating, very interesting. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that over the, the coming uh, months that there will be many more questions and hopefully some more time that we can sit together. Uh, so we want to thank you again. Uh, thank you. Us. I'm paying back my debt to CivilNet because really, thanks to you, I was able to be in the middle of the developments. Thank you. Now, we're happy to provide that help. And thank you very much for watching CivilNet. Again, uh, you've been watching Ambassador Piotr Shvedalski, uh, the ambassador from the European Union to Armenia. My name is Mashak Hazarian here for CivilNet TV. We'll see you soon.